video. Right, I thought we'd do something a little bit different today. Tasteful graphics for the Interceptor 650. These little beauties were supplied by Hitchcock's Motorcycles and I'll leave a link in the video description down below for anyone who's interested. Now, Hitchcock's have a huge choice of graphics for all the Royal Enfield motorcycles. Old and new for people restoring the older bikes or people that just want to pep up and customise one of the newer models. And they've now introduced these vinyl graphics for the Interceptor 650 models with the single coloured tanks. This is the metallic gold version. They also have a metallic gunmetal version and a flat black. I have to say they are quite different from the graphics that I used to use sort of 20 years ago. This is a 70 micron thick vinyl made in Germany and it's what we call a 10 year vinyl. That is, once it's affixed to a vehicle, it's guaranteed to last for 10 years exposed to the elements. Obviously on a motorcycle that's kept in a garage, it's going to last substantially longer than that. Now, apart from looking good, there are other advantages to fitting this sort of thing to your tank, especially where the tank meets the seat, because it is going to act as a buffer for pesky zips and things like that that might scratch your tank, which has got to be a good thing for your tank long term. These vinyls, I have to say, are very reasonably priced, especially when you consider the level of detail that's been incorporated into them. Now, I think Hitchcock's described these as a two-part vinyl. In actual fact, they're a four-part vinyl. You've got a thick central bar or stripe with the Interceptor logo cut into it, and that is surrounded by a single pinstripe that goes all the way around, but in actual fact, it's separate from the rest of it once it comes to application. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, that does make it a little bit trickier to fit. It's been a fair few years since I did this on a regular basis. And I did find it, shall we say, challenging. Now, if you've got no experience of doing this kind of job and you don't have the confidence to have a go at it, there are plenty of companies and privateers that fit graphics to vehicles for a living who I'm sure will be able to do this for you in minutes for a very competitive price. In fact, I reckon you could probably buy these graphics, get an expert to fit them, and you're not gonna spend much more than 30 pounds all in. So there's no need to sweat it if you like the look of these graphics, but you don't want to have a go at it yourself. But if you do want to have a go at it yourself, I'm going to take you through it. The Interceptor is a modern classic motorcycle. And these graphics, in a way, sort of emulate those hand-painted panels that some of the other models have on them. So it's not essential that you get a perfect clinical finish with these. Or at least, that's my take on it. Royal Enfield are famous for their hand-painted pinstripes, and they are not perfect because they are hand-painted. So, within reason, slight misalignment in my book isn't a tragedy, it just adds to the character. Or at least, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. The other thing that you do need to consider as well is that body panels, whether they be on a car or on a motorcycle, are not as symmetrical as you think they are. There are almost always slight discrepancies from one side to another, so making precise measurements and setting markings out on something like this in order to get it dead central doesn't always pay in the end. I learned a long time ago that the best way to do something like this is to match it up by eye. By all means, measure and mark if you want to, but don't be surprised if it doesn't get you where you want to be. You're going to need some very basic tools to carry out this task and the things that everyone should have available to them in the garage, especially if they watch this channel. A good supply of workshop wipes is essential. You're also going to need a panel wipe, something to degrease and de-wax your tank so that the adhesives on the vinyl will work properly. You're also going to require a mister bottle of some sort. I've just used an old wash-off bottle with about half a pint of cold water containing two or three drops of washing up liquid or washing detergent, whatever you want to call it. 
You will also need the special motorcycle tool HD01. These provide a gentler heat which is hot enough to do the job you want it to do but is unlikely to get you into any trouble. You can use an automotive heat gun but they are a bit fierce and I would say if you're going to use one use it with extreme caution. If you don't have a HD01 of your own, you can usually find one on your wife or partner's side of the bedroom. Just make sure you put it back where you found it. Using that panel wipe and a clean workshop wipe, thoroughly degrease your tank well beyond the areas that you think you're going to be sticking the adhesive. Carry out this procedure at least twice. I like to do it three times. And this ensures that you have got absolutely the best contaminant free surface to set those graphics down onto. Remove your petrol cap so you've got a better view of what you're doing and then just put something like a rag into the fillet purely because you are going to be spraying a little bit of water around and you don't want it mixing with your petrol. Now, in their instructions, Hitchcock's recommend that you remove the tank. I don't disagree with that. I think it certainly will make this job a little bit easier, especially if you've not done any of this kind of work before. I'll leave that to your discretion. The vinyl will arrive to you on one single strip and it will probably be rolled up inside a cardboard tube for safety. The actual vinyl itself is sandwiched between a backing paper and a semi-translucent top paper. And before you can fit this, the front part and the rear part that are normally separated by the petrol cap need to be separated from each other. So carefully using a pair of sharp scissors, just cut along the gap in between them. probably going to be easier for most people to fit the front part first. It's smaller, it's much more manageable and it will give you an idea of what the material is like to work with before moving over to the longer and more difficult to handle strip. Liberally spray that water and soap solution onto the area that you're going to fit the vinyl onto. This is going to assist you with positioning of your vinyl. It acts like a lubricant that actually delays adhesion to give you time to get everything into place. Otherwise the adhesive would just grab instantly and if you haven't got it in exactly the right place you're in a whole world of trouble. Carefully peel back the backing paper for the area of the decal that fits adjacent to the fuel filler and then crease that backing paper back. Don't expose all of it yet. And when you've done that you can offer your vinyl up to the aperture making sure it's right up to the fold in the metal but it doesn't go over that fold. When you're happy with the positioning and only when you are 100% happy with the positioning carefully start to remove the backing paper. Now with a small piece like this it does make it easier to take all the backing paper off. When you're dealing with the longer part that isn't a sensible move and I'll cover that when we get onto that bit. Now if you've got enough water on that panel this is going to slide around and move around easily for positioning. If you find that it's too dry it will start to stick and you'll find it difficult to manipulate the vinyl. Gently peel it up and just squirt some more water underneath. Starting near to the fuel filler start to press it down gently and then apply some heat from HD01. You can, if you want, use something like an old credit card or a spatula to help with this. But it must be very soft and flexible. These are extremely thin graphics. And especially once you've warmed them up, they're very easy to damage even with a piece of plastic. Starting again from the front near the fuel filler, carefully, and you may have to use your fingernails to facilitate this, start to peel the top paper back away from the decals. 
it may peel away a little bit easier if you dampen it first. Be very careful and very gentle while doing this because the decal will not be stuck to the tank properly yet. Don't worry about any bubbles or rucks in the vinyl at this stage. We're going to sort that out before the job's finished, don't worry. This vinyl is designed to shrink slightly with heat and you will be able to get all creases and bubbles out without any major hassle as long as you're careful and you take your time. The most difficult parts of this are the pinstripes, the cutout pinstripes. It's just a matter of not getting into a panic and taking your time. Now, if when you've got it off it looks perfect, you're good to go with the second part. If it looks a mess like this, don't worry. This is where the heat from HD01 truly comes in. Use your fingers to align it and flatten it down as best you can but be careful not to crease the vinyls then start to apply the heat the heat will evaporate any residual water loosen up the adhesive so that it starts to stick properly and more importantly it starts to shrink the vinyl don't forget this vinyl is flat and you're trying to apply it to a curved surface now, I found the best way to deal with this particular vinyl is actually not to use a spatula. I used an old sort of trade secret that we used to use with the really thin 20 year vinyl. Remove any bubbles and folds by starting in the middle of the vinyl and massaging that fold or bubble out towards the edge. And as you do so, keep gentle heat on it with the HD01 and I guarantee that providing you are patient and careful when you're finished it will look like this Now the large section goes on in exactly the same way. The only difference is obviously it's much larger which makes it a little bit more difficult to manage but you're still using exactly the same principle and techniques. Now, on the part where the interceptor wording is cut out into the vinyl, be especially careful. There are lots of tiny, friable little parts. Only use downward pressure to secure them in place. And this is where I'll let you into that little trade secret that we used to use with the 20 year vinyls. Instead of using a blade or a spatula, use a workshop wipe as a pad to gently massage out the bubbles and the rooks. Combined with some gentle heat, this is far safer and just as effective at getting a nice, flat, smooth finish.
Okay, so I'm out of practice and I had some very slight wiggles in some of the pinstripes, but I'm happy with that. This is exactly the same procedure that you should be able to utilise with most vinyl products like this. An expert that's doing it all day, every day, undoubtedly is going to be able to do it quicker and better. But for 15 quid, all in, a blind man on a galloping horse would be very glad to see that. When you're finished, you can give the whole tank a gentle wipe down with a damp cloth. But do not use any waxes or polishes on your tank for at least 48 hours to give the adhesives chance to cure properly. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and my other videos and in doing so, helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. Now, if there are any odd noises during the narration of this video, I'll apologize now. I do have a plaster in doing some work in the house, which isn't ideal. We've done our best to minimize disruption, but it may have come through in one or two parts of the audio. I do apologize. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me when you do that. I am, of course, going to be back on Friday with the third and final part of the Mule's Day Out. So until then, if you're riding, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.